Okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Today in Tech. I am once again playing your host. Uh, I'm Michael Simon from Macworld. I am joined by Ken Mingus from Computer World. And today we're talking about the iPhone 14. Ken, I think this is the first time we've met since the event. Correct. Am I right about yes. that? Yes. So we haven't even talked about the event, like uh, on this thing. No, I mean, no. I mean, we've, we've, we've talked about it. Yeah. Like together. Yeah. So yeah, iPhone 14 Pro is what both of us have. And Relax. yeah, we, we have the larger one. It doesn't really matter um, yet. So this will be in a future episode, but there are rumors that this is the last year that the two Pro phones are going to be like patently identical other than the screen size. Next year, there's rumors that it's going to be the iPhone 15 Pro Ultra or iPhone 15 Ultra like they did with the Apple Watch. Yeah. And it will have a bigger screen, 6.7 inches, maybe even bigger, but other new features that are exclusive to that Max so model. Will there be three? A Pro, no. a Pro Max, and a Pro Ultra? No, no. It'll just be the Pro and the Ultra. Okay. And those will be your options. And they can They've differentiate done the line. Yeah, Apple's done this before. So a couple generations ago, the Pro Max had a slightly better camera. I think it had, that was the uh, 2X zoom mm -hmm. or maybe 3X zoom versus 2X zoom. I forget, but it, it had a slightly better camera. So if you wanted like the best of the best, you needed to get that larger one. And then they, they only did that for one generation and then they went back to, it's the same. Yeah, and it's been that way now since the iPhone 13. Mm -hmm. So this model, the iPhone 14, you don't have to make any, there's no choice to be made. If you want a large phone, if you want to, it's the same. They're $100 difference, but 6.1 inches versus 6.7 inches. Other than that, exactly the same phone. Yeah. Yeah. I have the Max. Ken has the Max. It's just preference. Yeah. It's, and, and, you know, to TLDR, it's been a great phone. Yeah. Although I do, I do want to talk a little bit about the rollout, which to me, seemed a bit shaky and rocky around the software and the activation issues and a little the, bit you yeah know, more so than i've noticed well i mean when when i got mine i didn't have any problem with the activation issues you know with the eSIM stuff i know i know some people did but i what did is, have what's that, your carrier uh at t okay i have verizon i also didn't have any problems okay but i did have a problem with the uh after i had transferred the data from my iphone 13 pro to the new one mm -hmm. where I basically let them do their thing for 30, 45 minutes. I walked away, I came back and this thing was like dead as a doornail. I'm like, you know, screen was dead, could, wouldn't come on, you know, and I'm, you know, and I, I'd forgotten about the whole the, the process for rebooting is a little different now, you know, the volume up, volume down, yeah. you know, yeah, that's different. For, so I'm, I'm squeezing, yeah, you know, yeah. and nothing's happening. So I finally plugged it into my MacBook pro and mm -hmm. it came back. And it might have come back anyway, because it seems like for a lot of people, the you know, it appeared to be dead, but it really wasn't. It was doing something, but the screen was dark and it was non-responsive. Not exactly an ideal uh, upgrade situation, aside from the fact that as soon as you got the phone up and running, you had to download a, uh, an update, 16, iOS 16.0.1. Well, you, and you, you don't have to. You well, didn't have to, but, well, yeah, 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 you know, that it was there. And then I guess Apple's rolling out another update uh, next week because of the, the camera thing, you know. Yeah, I don't have that either. I haven't had anyone that. In Macworld, no. But yeah, with third party <clears throat> video and, and photo apps like Instagram, TikTok. TikTok, yeah. Um, the optical image stabilization sensor is doing funky things and it's not like locking in on the. Subject, it's just kind of like, like almost it vibrating. It's, it's like shaking, shaking, vibrating. Yeah, so that a fix for that is coming. Some people are, are seeing excessive warnings about copying and pasting. That's the fix for that coming. Um, some people have complained about the camera app is slower than expected. I haven't seen I hadn't that. I noticed either, that. But that's also, so a, 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 like a small little kind of bug up update is coming. Apple said, well, Apple told the Wall Street Journal allegedly next week. So right. the week of the 26th, um, that's that's not uncommon for that to happen. This time around, so iOS 16, adoption is quicker than iOS 15. And like there hasn't been any like major crippling uh, phone bugs. Like no. usually there's something, I remember the iPhone 10 had that like 
touch thing where you were like they, it, it became unresponsive to 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 touches which is a problem or uh, antenna was, gate who could forget antenna, antenna gate, gate was a big holding one. it wrong yeah yeah, that, yeah, yeah where the calls would drop off if you if you held it the wrong way. so there hasn't been any major bugs like that they're all you know quality of life issues i mean the, the camera one is probably the biggest but it, it doesn't seem to be like super duper widespread mm -hmm. and it's more of you know like people have it's not like instagram is like you know life or death here <laughs> no well, it, it is, loves it, instagram but well i i did try the camera in instagram and i did not have any any yeah i didn't either and there's always there's always ways around it you know you can take it like because apple's camera app worked for everybody yeah it was just these third-party apps and some people had said well maybe it's because they're not updated for ios 16 which i was like well that doesn't seem right and it, it's they not just that. put it all you know but the, the thing about it is you know obviously these are expensive devices and you want the upgrade process especially for people who may be new to apple or haven't upgraded in a while to have as you know as smooth yeah. an upgrade process as they can and it just felt like a little ragging around the edges again you like you say no universal showstoppers not anything that uh as best we can tell has hurt the devices or anything but it just felt you know it, it wasn't great to see all these reports bubbling up over the next few days after the iphone got here you know and they the they always do i mean apple it's the biggest company in the world they sell they probably sold 20 million of these things last week yeah so you know they're gonna those reports are gonna gonna are gonna happen and they're gonna make huge news and that's just the way it goes but um every year the scale of this rollout gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you know these things i mean things break software breaks hardware yeah. breaks thankfully there's no like major hardware issues at all like right. the camera thing people thought maybe it was related to the optical image sensor it's not it's related to the software and the way it's it's um communicating with it so yeah. there doesn't seem to be any major hardware bugs there doesn't seem to be any super terrible um, software bugs either just more like nuisance stuff yeah so um that hopefully will be fixed next week and you know 16.1 here we come that's the well, next let, let's talk about the phones yeah okay did, did you know you've talked for for years about how you wanted an always on yeah display and yeah well okay let's let's start there always on display first time we've gotten it on an iphone it's great yeah like there's no other way to say it apple in its typical apple way of doing things waits five years longer than they should and then does it in a different way sometimes that's not successful sometimes it's you know it feels different for the sake of feeling different this feels like a natural extension of the apple watch so if you if, if you have an apple watch for the last i want to say the series five maybe the four i think it was four, 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 four always yeah. on display I yeah think yeah it so it's been it's been four years where they brought it to the Apple Watch, which is arguably more important than the phone. Mm -hmm. When the first couple of generations of Apple Watch, when it was just a blank nothing on your wrist, and the, and the SE is still that, it's 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 not ideal. Like you want to look at your wrist and see, you know, a, a time <laughs> without having to like aggressively raise your wrist or to, tap, to turn yeah, on the, yeah, the or tap. So you know, it's definitely more important there, but it's the same technology. So it's using. Um, a very low frequency LPTO display that goes all the way down to one hertz. Hertz? One hertz? hertz. One hertz, I think. Yeah. So um, uh, ProMotion goes all the way up to 120 hertz. The non-ProMotion phones do go to 60. That's, that's standard, which is a refresh rate. So that's how fast it's refreshing per second. Mm -hmm. 120 is obviously extraordinarily fast. That's why it feels so smooth when you're scrolling and things like this. One hertz is like you know, literally like one, two. So it's very slow, very low power. Yeah. So, because if it refreshed at 90 or 60, you know, you're using gonna, a lot you, of juice it's, for it's, no, it's, it's going to no use battery, relief, uh, battery yeah. life for no reason. Right. Yeah. So what it does is uh, when, when the lock screen, you know, when, when the display dims, however you have that set, normally it would go off. Trying to get, yeah, that's, that's yeah. actually uh... that. Well, that, that, that's your lock screen. You're showing yeah, right I'm now. trying to turn it off. Oh well, you know, I still see. Never the mind. <laughs> well, it looked fine when I was looking at it, Dan. <laughs> but no, it's it's actually really. Re I, I didn't think it was going to be that dramatically different. I didn't think it was a big deal not being able to look at the screen and see something. I glance at this thing all the time now. Yeah, well, we do that. 
like even when so on the iPhone 13 and the and the iPhone 14 non pro like you look at your phone when it's on a desk you look at your phone when it's on a charger on a nightstand just habitually and there's nothing there for right. the last 15 years that's just how it's been so to look over and see okay notification came in uh time date and even the wallpaper and the widgets it's it's excellent like it cuts down on how many times I need to touch my phone, I don't even know, dozens of times a day, if mm-hmm. not more. Because like right now, like I see it's one fifteen. I got a, I got a notification from Major League Baseball telling me something, and I don't need to check it right now. Like it's important stuff. And yes, it's very overdue. It should have been with the iPhone 10, in my opinion, yeah. as soon as they went to OLED. But, you know, here we are. We got it now. And it's 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 very well done, and you know Apple is going to treat it like you know they reinvented the always on display, and maybe they have because there's no other Android phone that I know of that does it quite this way. Android yeah. phones generally they shut everything off; it goes to black. You see an icon or whatever notification came in, time, date, and you know maybe like maybe now playing or something like that. This is like you're looking at your lock screen, but you know really amped down. And once those live activities notifications that's come what in, I'm it'll for. be even more useful. Yeah. And that's that's coming with 16.1? Yes. Okay. And that's Probably basically... Probably late, late October. Okay. That's basically you're watching, a, you're, you're tracking a game. Yeah. And it basically updates the lock screen dimmed down, but lock, updates it in real time when there's a right. score change or something. So like right that. now, you, what notifications like, it, we'll, we'll use the game one. If you're following, say I'm following the Yankees or something. Like I'll get a notification that they scored and then I'll get another one uh, 20 minutes later and then another one three minutes later and they just keep piling up. Now with this live activities, they can update that existing notification. Mm-hmm. So it'll it'll stay there on your screen and the score will change, um, which is just great for that and, and, and for, you know, for other things too. However, developers choose to implement this into their apps. You, you, it's going to cut down on the mountains of notifications that we get coming in every every minute of every day um, just by updating a single static notification. And, and as you say, it'll make the always-on display that much more useful as well. It, it's also nice being able to customize these things a little bit. Obviously, yeah. you get to pick among the widgets that Apple has sort of seeded the ground with. You mm-hmm. can change the font. You can change what's at the very top, you know, sunrise, sundown, date, calendar things like that. So there is a little bit of customization. Yeah, way more than we've had in the past. Yeah, but but not so much. I think that, you know, Apple could have gone too far the other way and allowed too many uh, options on the on the lock screen and it would have junked it up. But it's a very elegant sort of way of yeah. giving you just enough information about yeah, the Yeah, the, the, the about. widgets are, are good little bite-sized, glanceable little pieces of info. Um, the notifications are, are, they're still there, you know, and they still are, are, uh, like you need to look at the phone and do the face ID thing for them to be to see what it is. So it's you know it's still still a privacy thing, and it's it's just it's very very well done, very thoughtful, and um, I think most people are going to choose to keep it on. You 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 can turn it off if you want. I wonder if I, in iOS 17 they're going to add a switch to turn off the wallpaper image because that's that's been the biggest complaint that I've seen. Really, like people people get confused kind of. Because it is, you know, you do see your whole entire wallpaper picture. It's just yeah. dimmer. Yeah. So people are like, like my, my wife, for example, she she got the pro and she's like, like, I keep thinking I have a notification because I look over and it's like a little bit, it's, it's not dark. Yeah. So maybe there'll be a toggle show hide wallpaper image and it'll just show the, the widgets, the time, the date and the notifications. That's, that's something that could be an option later on. But as it stands, I like it. I like how the image is still there, but but much dimmer and kind of saturated a little bit. So yeah. it doesn't uh, it doesn't take up too much of the of your battery life. I was just that I just wanted to go to battery life real quick because you know I I have I've had it on AOD on the whole time I've had the phone almost a week now. I've, I've noticed. I mean, I'm not measuring it. Maybe there is a small change in battery life in terms of how much it uses the battery over the course of the day i haven't noticed it in day-to-day use i yep. didn't uh, try it without the aod on but i you know i'm still so we did it. test it and with it off like for example so our benchmarks don't don't account for the always on display mm-hmm. so our benchmarks are going to compare screen time 
iPhone 14 Pro versus iPhone 13 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro is actually a little bit better in that capacity. But when you turn on the always-on display, that advantage kind of gets lessened. Mm -hmm. So the battery life is essentially the same with it on. So you can keep on the always-on display, and the battery life is about what it was with the iPhone 13 Pro Max and Pro, which is great. You know, yeah. like then no one had a problem with the battery life of the iPhone at all. The 13 yeah. is had some of the best battery life in the world. It's going to be even better on the plus, the 14 plus that's coming out in a couple of weeks, the seventh, I think. Apple said it's actually the best battery life it's ever gotten in a phone, which we'll be interested to test that. But that's, you know, this is what Apple does. It doesn't take away something that I gave you. So Apple's not going to introduce an always-on display unless it can do it at the same level. It's not going to say, oh, well, this iPhone gets now two hours less battery. They don't want, they don't want to make the trade-off, right. force right. customers to make the trade-off. Yeah. yeah, so it's going to be about the same as it was with the new feature on. You turn the new feature off, and you're getting actually a little bit better. We, we saw that same thing with the Apple Watch Series 4 when they introduced the always-on display. Same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you got that 18 hours of battery life with the always-on display on. If you turned it off, it was like 20-something. So same thing. Okay. Um, uh, we're still looking, we're still waiting for that like super duper battery breakthrough. Hasn't this isn't it? Obviously, you know, it's it, they're good. They're they're great. They don't last three days. And I think Apple is working towards that. We saw a little bit with the with the Ultra, mm -hmm. the Apple Watch Ultra, doubled the battery life. The Apple Watch, I mean, it's bigger for one, but it also has this battery optimization feature that's going to use like software algorithms to get it to. I think Apple said 60 hours, which is significantly yeah. longer without turning anything off. So I'm I'm anxious to see how that goes. I'm anxious to see how that um how that goes with the rest of the line. Right now that's only on the Ultra. Um the iPhone, I mean, battery optimization is fantastic, but there's no like feature where it mm -hmm. does things based on you know what you're doing at the moment where it so curious to see going forward if that's like the next kind of battery breakthrough thing that we see short of putting in like a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which is not going to happen. And like we're kind of stuck here at the moment, which is yeah, not a bad I, thing. It's good. I was just going to say adding a bigger battery is not really a solution. You can always it's add not, a big, yeah. that's not, you know, you, what you're talking about is software and technology yeah. to, 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 you know, solve the issue rather you than- You can always put a bigger battery in. I mean, Samsung does it, it they did it forever. It was up to 5,000 milliamp battery. Like that's always going to give you a little bit more. But if you're working with the same baseline, you know, it's just not, it's not really worth the trade-off in, first of all, weight, size. And, you know, as Samsung showed, it was a long time ago now, but sometimes those batteries, the bigger batteries can cause issues as well. Yeah. Well, that, you know, the other, obviously one of the other new big features is the 48 megapixel camera. Have you done much photography with this yet? I have not. It's been, I, well, I've been sick. Plus the weather's here has been terrible. Yeah. But uh, Jason, Jason Cross, Macworld's uh, Jason Cross did not a huge difference. Yeah. I'm over not, I mean, the 13. The, the images are slightly cleaner. Yeah, slightly better. So that, that, that 48 megapixel camera. Yeah. What, where you see the difference mm. is when you take it and you do something with that image. So you take a shot, it uh, scales it back to 12 megapixel if you don't use Pro Raw. If you use Pro Raw, you get, the you get that you get that full size. It's 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 a monster. And a image. Mongo file. Yeah, it's huge. Right. So that's that's another thing that um, I read this week. Uh, the iPhone 14 Pro next year might have Thunderbolt, which would really help get those files off of the phone right. quicker. Because yeah, they're big. Yeah. But if you if you bring that somewhere to a Mac or even edit it on your phone, and you zoom in, you really can see. Uh, Jason did it in his review. It's pretty remarkable. You can see, like by cropping up close to part of an image, just what it's doing. It's not going to make a huge difference in day to day shooting for most people. Most people want to take out their phone, snap it, take a really good picture. It does that, and it's it's done that for a couple of years now. Macro stuff is still there. Uh, the telephoto is about the same. You get that 2X now, which is nice because it's a stupid thing, 
but not having the two X was 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 annoying to me because, because like you were always one. having to go in between. Yeah, three is too much. One's three. too little. Like yes. two is the right yes. one for your yes. eye. Yeah. So that's it's good that they brought that back. It's not. It's the same sensor, so it's it's doing it uh, with software. But um, the best part that he showed or he demonstrated was that action mode. So that uses the optical image stabilization to to really kind of like you can like run around and and move and it really sh cuts down on that shakiness on that like jitter when you're yeah. when you're shaking uh, sports if you're running I don't know if you're say you're uh, on a slide and you're doing a thing like there are reasons why it would matter uh, maybe maybe shooting shooting an action scene in a, in, a, in a movie so that's cool but a, a, as a whole. You know, not a huge leap from the iPhone 13. And the same thing goes with the uh, processor. Uh, Jason tested it about 8% to 10% faster. Whatever. I mean, that's academic. We're not going to ever realize those gains in real use. Like, who cares? Well, and I, I think, you know, even though I know Apple's doing so much now with Apple Silicon, you know, the 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 era where you might see 25 or 30 percent jump i just think is i think you're looking at a you know diminishing returns maybe yeah. when they go to a small you know a three nanometer you might get a little bit more maybe 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 um, but I, I think you're looking at that consistent you know somewhere between 10 and 20 percent at the high end uh every year if you're lucky yeah so now it's, it's not even that it's uh jason couldn't even get it to take he, he got eight eight percent which is you yeah. know but if it was 20 percent, i mean who cares like it does we don't need you know, it's funny you because notice it day to day. Apple is so far ahead with this stuff, with its mobile chips, both the watch and the phone, that it doesn't need to really do much. I, I, so take the Apple Watch, for example. It, it has an S8. The S8 is the same as the S7, which is the same as the S6. Mm -hmm. If you look at Apple's speed estimates, they compare it to the S5 because that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And it does that matter? No, because it's still faster than the Qualcomm, whatever. I forget what number they're up to. Like, way faster. Like they don't need to come out with anything, but we have the expectation. Right. If we get a new phone, we're getting a new chip. Yeah. So Apple almost has to come out with a new name for its chip. But, it, it, you know, Jason said it probably should have just been the, the S15 plus. Because you know, it just something it that doesn't indicates it's been enhanced yeah, somehow. Yeah. It's, you know, sprinkled with fairy dust so it's it feels faster even. Right. And and it. and he said it did it doesn't feel faster at all. Like and that's because the iPhone 13 was so good and the iPhone yeah. 12 was so good. Like it like we don't need much more speed in these phones. It could probably take five years off and still be pretty close to whatever Qualcomm's doing in 2027. Because yeah. they're they're just so far ahead with benchmarks and with speed. All of the innovation now is going to be in the Mac, like those M series processors. That that's where Apple is going to really show the gains, the speed gains, the 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 neural engine stuff, um, memory allocation, all that stuff. I think is now going to shift to the Mac, which well, great, you know, because that's where yeah, we want the speed. Given that the iPhone is on a pretty good glide path, I think that makes sense. Yeah, was, I I did see some reports too that. Uh, um, people seem to be getting slightly faster 5G speeds. Yeah. Um, have you seen those? Uh, I read that, which is good. Um, so it uses the new Qualcomm X65 modem, which yeah. has the satellite stuff built into it. And then Apple does their own like companion chips and then some some software stuff to get it to all work. I'm not surprised that the 5G is a little bit better. I, I was never all that impressed with 5G on either the 12 or the 13, to be honest with you. Like I've been in situations where I've, where I've used it and it's fine, mm -hmm. but it's not great. It still stutters. It still drops uh, calls and uh, calls. It still drops text where they won't go through because there's too many people using it. So I'm not, I'm not surprised that Qualcomm has a better modem here. I'm also not surprised that they're still using the Qualcomm modem because we, we read that they're having a really hard time developing their own 5g modem, which, which, you know, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. That's why Qualcomm sells it to everybody because it's good. And they know what they're doing. So most likely it'll get the X70 next year. Like the rumors are that Apple's not ready yet. Maybe with the iPhone uh, 16, we'll mm -hmm. see. But for now, um, yes, probably slightly better 5G speeds, but still nowhere near 
the promise of what it will be once like these networks get built out and get the inf infrastructure behind it is able to support, you know, like uh, not quite millimeter, we not quite millimeter, millimeter wave everywhere, but better than what we have now. Yeah. It, it, it's still the early days. Um, well, before we go, let me ask you, what do you think of the color? Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We can't wait. go anywhere. Oh, without come on. Talking. This is, Okay, I'll, go, we'll, go. we'll talk about the color, but all right, we'll say the, the, we 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 haven't talked about the biggest change, the biggest thing, the biggest the biggest feature. You mean the bump? <laughs> it is big. Um, the the dynamic island is oh, the thing. Oh my god, yes! How could I forget? So that's the reason. It sounds ridiculous, but that's the marquee. I don't, think, I don't even think it sounds ridiculous, and it is dynamic. Phone. Maybe not an island, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's yeah. It's typical Apple, and only they can get away with calling something, something, some, for giving something like that this name. Yeah. But forget about the name. It is awesome. Yeah. It is so smart, so clever, and such a, a for lack of a better word, brilliant way to disguise an eyesore. We're not at the point yet, and we're not going to be for a long time where they can get rid of these, these, these camera cutouts. Whether mm -hmm. it's a notch, whether it's a circle, whether it's um, uh, uh, some kind of a blemish on the screen. Like it has to be there because Samsung has done under screen cameras. You can still see it. It still looks terrible. We're not there yet. And we're not going to be for um, for uh, for a while. For years. And Apple, you know, we so we we had the notch with the iPhone 10, which it was there. We got used to it. It's fine. I, I, I never had a huge problem with it, but it didn't do anything. It was yeah. just there. The dynamic island is a complete and total reimagining of what the top of the phone interface is, and it's 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 just fantastic. It's, it's, it's a whole new interface. It's yeah. a whole new way of interacting with whoever the came up with this thing deserves a massive raise or a promotion or something because it is so smart. Yeah, to have so it's kind of a multitasker, but not really. It doesn't have to be. It's kind of persistent but not really like it blends into the background yet it still kind of pops but it's up also and bubbles visually and shows you, you know going the, the on. things that it displays the colors the you know you get yes. up there it's it's very nice it does so there were always these little things going on in, in the background of our phone like timers like like music playing like i don't know face id apple pay things like this that happen yeah that we just kind of trusted were going on uh, maybe we needed to access them and we had to go back to an app or something and we had to use the, the slide up and you pause and you swipe. It was fine. This shows us like there is, this is real multitasking on a phone without even thinking about it, without even changing anything about how you work. There's no split screen. There's nothing you have to tap or press or move. It just works. Like the little thing, the little timer yeah. bubbles and you tap yeah. it and there it is. It's just, it's fantastic. So smart, so clever, so Apple. The, you know, the, the one tweak I, I would make, you know, with, with the dynamic island, let's say you've got music playing. If you tap and hold, it, you know, gets larger. It, it opens and the app, yeah. It opens, yeah, at, to, at the top. Oh, 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 tap and, tap and hold makes it, I understand what you're saying. Tap and hold just makes the yeah, dynamic yeah, island yeah. a little bit bigger. You've got a few controls there. Whereas the tap, I, to me, it feels like the tap should do that. Yeah, everybody... Like every review I've read, including our own, has said the same thing. Yeah. Like they kind of got that a little bit backwards. And I don't know how they fix it now without completely and totally I don't changing think you do. the behavior. I don't think you can say like, you you're right. It. Because you don't, like when you tap it, you want to stay there. Yeah. Do your thing and then move on. Instead, it opens up the app. Yeah. Um, maybe make it a, an option. I don't know if they could even do that. But yeah, I agree with you. And many, many people agree with you. Like, like literally every review I've read. Yeah. has said it's it's it just feels like like it's backwards yeah but that that aside that's it's just it's minuscule so compared to that. and we haven't great. even begun to tap the coolness of the dynamic island because again live live activities in 16.1 it's going to open up that whole thing to third party right now it just does apple stuff and whoever uses the the, the now playing api and and, yeah. the, and the call kit api yeah. so it's very limited once it it's opened up with live activity. I mean, it's going to do so much, so much more stuff. And it really changes the entire way between that and the always on display, which are two software enhancements, mm -hmm. which you have to buy the new phone to get because that's Apple. 
but their their software has nothing to do with the hardware. Same screen. I mean, yeah, they did change the look of the notch, but they could have done this on the iPhone 13. There's nothing, there's nothing preventing them from doing this in the notch. Yeah. It's just it's 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 the new thing. And it feels like like this is much like the iPhone 10 and the um, home indicator changed things from the home button to the home indicator. And we started giving all, all the gestures and the swipes and really entered that kind of immersive full screen world. I think this dyna- dynamic island is the next step. It's going to come to the iPad. It's going to come to the Mac. You you watch. It is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Agreed. And, uh, just a, a really smart. No one saw it coming. There were no rumors about it. But it's just fantastic. Crazy, ridiculous name, but awesome stuff. I don't even mind the name, but I agree. <laughs> I remember, you know, watching the event uh, whenever it was two weeks ago, thinking of all the things. And, and I, I even reached out to Johnny Evans and said, "I think the Dynamic Island is the big thing here." Yeah, they I, I literally AOD. laughed when they huh? when it when it popped on the screen. Yeah, and they showed the little thing which that we knew was coming, and then they said <laughs> Dynamic Island. Like I, I literally chuckled. Yeah, and then they showed what it did, and it's like, well, you, like, all right, I'm okay with this. <laughs> yeah, it's so, such a such a smart feature, and it's going to be copied. You watch. I mean, people have already said, "Oh, Android had it first. They did not. There's nothing like this on Android. Yeah. Yes, they had like the Pixel does like a battery indicator around the little circle. This is not the same thing. Yeah. This is it's all very fluid. It's all very interactive. It's just it's it's fantastic. fun. It's fantastic. It's just fun too. It's fun I mean, and functional. Yeah. It's not just eye candy. Like yeah. yes, it's 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 a lot of fun. And you want like it you you want, you want more to things to actually utilize fun. it so you can see what it does. Yeah. I do anyway. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> super, okay. super fun. All right. So the so the color. Color. Just real quick before we go. Well, now I got you... the space black and I okay. really like it. Is it is it's darker slightly darker than last year's black, right? Well, In certain lights, was there even a, a black? It was space gray. Space last gray, year. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, this is like a it's it's a it's a much deeper hue. Yeah. I like it. I like I'm like I I had the blue last year, the Sierra blue. It was okay. Yeah. Before that, I had I I did like the midnight green a lot. Like that was nice. I had but that one too. um the the space black is 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 nice. It's a nice deep black yeah the the deep purple it looks actually more purple in the video here than it does in real life it, it in depends real life, on the it, lighting i've seen a lot of different images in of many that. in yeah. many yeah if you get back a little it bit really it looks changes. more of a gray like yeah that. that's like a graphite now yeah it, it uh i wasn't over, overwhelmed with the new colors they're okay well but uh this the space I'm, I'm glad i got the black and rather than the purple my, my wife got the purple she, it's she in a case it. anyway it's in but a clear like case the, yeah. I like the black a lot. Yeah, good. All right. Any anything else uh, we should call out before we go? I think we've hit the highlights. I think so. Yeah. I mean, okay. those are the two big things. And always next time display, we're going to talk. Go ahead. Uh, always on display, dynamic island. Those are the two. If you're Damn, deciding uh, you whether or not things, to get yeah. the pro or the or the fourteen, yeah, I would. That tips the balance in my mind. All the other stuff is nice. The camera is fine. Battery life is great. Um, stainless steel versus aluminum, you know, all the same stuff that makes it more pro. Mm-hmm. Those two features are really like you're missing out if you don't have them. Got it. Okay. And and then next next time we talk, we'll talk about Apple Watch Ultra. Yes. Good. All right. I look forward to that one. That'll be fun. Um, okay. Well, listen, Michael, thank you. Thanks for, for going through all this with me. Um, and thanks for watching. If you've been watching us on our uh, on the computer world, LinkedIn page, maybe head over to the YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe and like the uh, show that way. And if you subscribe, you'll know we're coming back. Uh, And I think that'll do it. Leave some comments or questions for us in the uh, comments field. We might get back to you if we can. And that'll do it. So thanks, Michael. See you next time. See ya.